read to you a few verses today. Verse 26 of chapter 1, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the livestock and all the earth and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Verse 27, And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him both male and female, he created them. All right, let's go to chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. Go down to verse 4. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. When the Lord made the earth and the heavens, and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no man to work the ground, but streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. The Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a nephish kaya, a living being. Now, what was his purpose? What did he do? God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed, and the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Skip down to verse 15. The Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. And the Lord commanded the man, you to eat freely from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. And the Lord God said to him, it is not good for the man to be alone. This is the part I like. I will make a helper. What's the next word? Suitable. That little word there is interesting. It means 100% compatible. It carries with it co-equal. What God here is talking about are two co-equal halves that make one incredible whole. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and the birds of the air, and he brought them to man, to see what man would name them. And whatever man called each living creature, that was his name. And so man gave names to all the livestock, the birds, the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. This was not a bunch of baboons trying to figure out who was going to be the king of the roost. This is not about one male and a harem. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib. He had taken out of the man, and he brought her to him, and the man said, By the way, I wish I could read Hebrew. Because... The Hebrew interpretation here is just much better. This is now bone of my bone. This is the part in the Hebrew where it's kind of like, ah, wow. Did that get it across? Knock my socks off. The, the expression here, is one of pure delight, absolute fulfillment, total completeness. Now this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man, and for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked 
and yet they felt no shame. 